Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a superb week or sorry, I should say weekend so far. Students, this is an IELTS speaking part two, the cue card, the long part. And this cue card will be focusing on a traditional object. So an object that is reflective of your tradition. Welcome Fong, hi Angel, hi Dylan, welcome members. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. We will have speaking part three after this class where everybody can join the chat. And that will be a continuation of this topic as IELTS does. So in the IELTS exam, part two and part three are always connected and related. It's very, very important to keep this in mind because you need to make strong connections among your answers. Welcome, Elizabeth. Hi, Amra. Good to see more of you joining in the class. Students, this is a lesson brought to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, visit us there. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live lessons. They contain the materials, the practice exams, the audio materials, the speaking chat interface, and much, much more, which we use every single time in these classes. So if you like these live classes, if you're here in these live classes regularly, make sure to visit us at aehelp.com, this website here, and click that big red button that's just right above my head there. It is a one-time payment. You get lifetime access and it doesn't cost a lot of money. So it's a great way to prepare for your upcoming IELTS exam. You just simply click that button, fill out the form, and you are good to go. Uh, students, we are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We are an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent and I hold a degree in psychology. I'm here to help you succeed click that button. We've got a new discount code for you from the video we just released on our YouTube channel. The code is PANDA9. Hoping to bring a little bit of environmental awareness with that code as well. Welcome Alexi, our chat moderator. Nice to have you here. And Gukhan, uh, good to have you join our group of members. Nice to have you on board. Send me an email to get those exclusive uh, videos. I'll show you where in just a moment. This is our general IELTS website at gieltshelp.com. Same concept as with the academic. Click that big red button there that's just above my head. And again, it's just a one-time payment. So we don't believe in subscription models. We want you to just uh, help us help you one time and then we'll help you the rest of the way. All right, students. Um, again, that code was PANDA9 for that 10% discount. Um, we do have apps, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help from your app stores. Uh, we do have Instagram, IELTS underscore A Help, G IELTS Help. I will be posting the new schedules within the next 24 hours there. And uh, if you have questions, send me an email, uh, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Go, Ken, that's where you want to send an email and say I'm a new member. I have exclusive video access, please uh, hook me up and then we can enable that feature for you, that perk, okay? All right, Lexi, thanks for putting the email address into the chat. Um, students, um, we do have, you can order physical books from us, so you, well, from Amazon, but our books, uh, and uh, those books are uh, AE Helps Academic IELTS, GE Helps General IELTS. We have uh, two exam books for each. There's six exams. We're working on another four for each exam. And um, this is what our schedule looks like from May 5th to May 13th. So we've got uh, speaking part two. Uh, speaking part three. Um, we've got uh, next week uh, speaking part one starting up on the 11th. So mark that in your calendar. 
And then uh, we have task two writing for members starting on the 12th, followed by listening for subscribers and then speaking on Saturday. So that's the next week's schedule uh, market. Um, the times are according to universal standard time. Uh, mark those and uh, definitely subscribe. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you will get notifications. So it's a great way to uh, stay up to date. Uh, new video for everybody, new practice video. It's a karaoke style speaking. That's right, Angel, lots of online classes. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I love hearing success stories. I love helping people grow in their English and in their communication. So we're here for you. Uh, this is our uh, latest video release uh, that uh, our team has put together uh, for you to improve uh, and the full video will be released on our website shortly. Uh, let's get into some IELTS speaking part two everybody. So here we go, uh, IELTS uh, speaking part two. You are in your speaking interview. As I've said uh, on multiple occasions, the interview is 12 to 15 minutes. You've got about five minutes of part one. Um, some questions to get to know you, who you are, where you're from, what you like doing in your free time. And then once you are done with part one, the examiner will say that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these questions. Think about your answers. You can take notes in this one minute time if you wish, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. You have some note paper and your pen over there. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, talk about an object that reflects your traditions, your one minute preparation time begins now, and then you have one minute to prepare okay all right so um, this is the question and uh, this is what you need to do you have to think quickly you have to think with a clear mind you have to visualize okay now your very very first step everybody is to read the question carefully because you have to answer all the questions on the cue card to get a full mark for this part okay so let's look at that talk about an object that reflects uh, your traditions okay uh, what is this object when and where did you get it uh, where do you keep this object and why? What do you use this object for? Uh, what part of your traditions does it reflect? You will have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. Okay, and students, you know, I do recommend glancing over the questions in extra time just so you really fixate the concepts in your head. I still find that a lot of candidates tend to miss answering one of the questions on the cue card and it's not good. Okay, so ideally you want to answer all of them within the first 90 seconds. So it is a good idea to go over the cue card questions twice, okay, to ensure that you answer all of them within the first 90 seconds. Okay, let's just do that. All right, here we go. Uh, talk about an object that reflects your traditions. What is this object? When and where did you get it? Where do you keep this object and why? What do you use this object for? What part of your traditions does it reflect? Okay, so here, now that you've read the question, okay, you have to identify what category we're discussing and you have to identify the tenses that you're going uh, to use. So here everybody, uh, obviously we're talking about an object, okay? And when we talk about an object, uh, we want to talk about its appearance. What does it look like? Okay, we want to talk about its origin. Where do you get it? Okay, 
So where can you get this object? Uh, we want to talk about its function. So how does it work? Okay, its use, what is it used for? And of course the experience, okay? In that order. And so first talk about the appearance. Second, talk about the origin. Third, talk about its function. How is it used? Fourth, talk about its application, right? So where do you use it? How do you use it? Um, and then five, talk about the experience. Okay. All right. That's what you should do. Um, and then also think about the tense. So look at the questions. Of course. So here, um, the question is saying, uh, talk about an object that reflects your tradi tradition. So Domenico, Fuang, Amra, Chayani, Angel, what do you think? What would be the most common tense in this uh, one to two minute response? Okay. What do you think would be the most uh, logical here? What tense? Angel says past perfect. I don't know if I agree with that. Domenico says past and present. Domenico, make up your mind. Which one? Past or present? Anahita says, I think it's present simple. Angel says present. Fong says present. Yeah, it's the present, right? Because you're talking about an object that generally reflects the traditions of uh, your uh, country. Okay? So, um, absolutely. Okay. So, present tense. because it's generally reflecting. It's an object that has a general truth behind it. Okay, absolutely. And then perhaps secondary would be present perfect. Why? Because present perfect reflects experience and achievement. And there's a very good chance that when you're talking about this object, you're going to discuss how this object or how this object represents the experience and the achievement of uh, your national uh, pride, your culture, your belief system, right? So your tense would be present tense and present perfect. Now, students, when you get ready for the IELTS exam, this concept of um, talking about an object and the tense that you need to use, um, you definitely want to know this really well, and this should only take you um, a few moments to figure out. Again, uh, on the website, so this is gltshelp.com, you join by clicking the big red button, or you can try it for free by clicking the green button, okay? And once you've joined up um, and you go to your uh, My Student account, Okay, so here's that My Student page. Uh, I really strongly suggest going to this uh, function here, which is the uh, full online academic course, okay? And when you're there, uh, go to the speaking section, and it's one of these parts here, um, which will uh, give you an idea of um, sample dialogues and how to talk about people places, objects. So uh, when you have that and when you understand that, then that one minute preparation time uh, in your part two is enough. It's enough time to think about this. Okay, it's an object, so I need the appearance, the origin, the uh, function, the application, the experience. These are my notes. This is how I put it together. The tense here is present tense, this is what I should be focusing on. And then you know that, okay, uh, the uh, next step is uh, to think of a few good ideas, okay? So uh, next step is think of at least two to three possible choices um, for your answer, okay? 
All right, so don't just think of one, okay? Um, so, you know, some people might say, hey, uh, flag, the flag uh, represents my culture really well. Yeah, flag could be okay, all right? There's potential there for sure, but don't just go with it. So think of a few other ones. Um, give me some objects, students. I know you're from different places from around the world. So uh, give me some objects that uh, reflect your nation's traditions. I'll give you some of mine. You can even try to guess if you want, alternatively, of what kinds of objects uh, reflect Canadian culture and uh, Canadian uh, tradition. Okay. Applied physics, the uh, general IELTS uh, speaking, same as the academic. Okay. So the listening and the speaking sections are the same. Afuang says the conical hat. Dylan says the evil eye bead. Romelia says carvings from the prominent sculptor Brantsushi. Elizabeth says the shirt and a hat. Okay, what kind of a shirt and a hat? All right, uh, let me give you some from um, maybe Canadian culture, like the snowshoe. <laughs> um, or how about, I think this is the one I'm going to choose, a bottle of grade A maple syrup. There we go. So the canoe, as I uh, talked about in, was it yesterday's class? I, I drew a canoe. It was for the reading when we were talking about Angel Falls and the word canoe came up. The canoe is definitely an object of tradition for uh, Canadians. All right, Domenico says, the coffee pot and the pasta maker. Amra says the kamancha, a musical instrument in the Azerbaijan culture. Chayani says a pattern scarf. All right, so great. You all have objects of tradition. And now today's topic is nice and unique in this way. And everybody who's watching, even if you're not a member, I really challenge you to do this with me. So I'm going to develop my topic in this one minute preparation time according to my Canadian culture and you can do the same develop your notes and then go from there so here I've got a few different thoughts for Canadian culture okay so just this is just notes for you to kind of uh, keep this in mind by the way for those of you coming to Canada this is a good uh, lesson to learn so that you can kind of understand a little bit of Canadian culture okay all right and so snowshoe one word who knew all right I've wore them on multiple occasions but I've never written the word there you go okay so I'm going to go with a bottle of maple syrup okay everybody knows what that is Hopefully some of you have been fortunate enough to taste a bottle of Canadian maple syrup. It is delicious. Everybody who tastes it. A lot of, a lot of tourists that come to uh, Canada pack their <laughs> luggage full of maple syrup and, and smoked salmon. <laughs> Where did your shirts go and your shoes? Oh, we left it there. No, the maple syrup and the salmon are better than my shoes. I can buy clothes anywhere, but uh, the maple syrup and the salmon, I gotta take that, so. See it all the time. Tourists going home with a bag full of maple syrup and and salmon. It's not alcoholic, Alexi. We're not talking about whiskey here. <laughs> okay, a bottle of maple syrup. Okay, I'm going to go with that one. So now I uh, I I write my notes. Okay. So the appearance. Oh boy, what a great object to discuss okay so <clears throat> um, it is a transparent uh, okay so notes like I can't be writing sentences right let's be realistic 
So uh, let's talk about its appearance. So I'm just going to write A for appearance. Uh, transparent glass, okay. You'll see it, it will make sense, golden. Okay. Shaped, all right, 250 milli. Okay, I'm gonna just stick with that, all right. Then um, the origin. Stores, of course, most stores, gift shops. But in my case, where I like to get it from is Costco, okay. Uh, I know Costco is in a few different countries now. Um, it's in the US and in uh, Canada. Costco is a massive store. It's a giant warehouse. If you ever visit Canada or the US and you go to a Costco, you are going to be amazed. There are some big stores in some countries, but I've never seen stores quite as big as Costco in the US and Canada. We literally buy boxes of uh, diapers and things that are like raw, as big as you can stretch your hand. Um, it's a wholesale shop, so we go there once a month, we buy everything that we need for the whole month, and then off we go. So uh, Costco, yeah, it's a warehouse, Elizabeth, and it's a giant warehouse at that, um, and it's really well priced. You need a membership card, and um, you get about twice as much for your money as in other shops. So for those of you planning to uh, spend some time in uh, Canada, uh, Costco, I highly recommend it. Check it out. We're not sponsored by them. I just want you to save money. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm going to say Costco here, and then uh, I'm going to say uh, utility. Okay, so use. All right. Uh, fridge. Uh, fridge is short for refrigerator, and although maple syrup does keep outside of the fridge, it's better to keep it in a fridge. Um, it's in a fridge, uh, small amounts. Okay, I don't recommend using too much maple syrup. You can get diabetes. Okay, um, small amounts and um, uh, sweetener. Okay, application. Well, if you've heard of it, we love putting it on our pancakes. Pancakes is a traditional food in Canada, but we use maple syrup in a lot of different ways for a lot of different desserts. Uh, we use, I even use it in a, my coffee sometimes, as weird as somebody might think that is. Some, some of my fellow Canadians are like, really, you put maple syrup in your coffee? Yeah, I like maple syrup coffee, or even in my tea. Um, so I use it uh, as a sweetener for a variety of different uh, purposes, okay? Experience. All right. Um, it's joyful. Just a sp spoonful of maple syrup puts a smile on my face. It reminds me of the multiculturalism of Canada, and I will explain why that is. It reminds me of the hard work of the Canadian people, and I will tell you why that is in a moment. So, um, and you know, I'm thinking about this for the first time with this uh, cue card. So I did not plan this, uh, this concept before this class. I am working um, through this with you, right? But I really do have this bottle of maple syrup in front of me, in front of my eyes, and um, there's just so much that I can connect to it. Oftentimes the um, maple syrup in Canada, if you've ever visited, uh, you're going to notice comes in like um, a bottle like this that is actually shaped kind of like a maple leaf. Okay, so the bottle itself will look like that, right? Um, so of course, maple syrup comes from the maple tree, a specific type of maple tree, not just any maple tree. There are lots of different maple trees. Please do not tap your maple tree. Uh, it could be poisonous, okay? There's a specific type of maple syrup tree that grows in Canada where we get our maple syrup from. Uh, so uh, don't just go out there and find a maple tree and say, hey, uh, Adrian said that uh, maple syrup comes from a maple tree. Um, 
most maple trees are poisonous okay <laughs> so do not do not tap a maple tree if you see one in some other country okay all right um so uh that is it and then of course after i'm done my notes okay so notice here in one minute it's transparent golden shaped uh, gift shop, Costco, fridge, small amount, sweetener, pancake, dessert, coffee, tea, joy, multi, hard work. And that gives me plenty of context to talk for 90 seconds to two minutes. Okay. Look at that. Fuang and Elizabeth have even put a little maple leaves up on uh, the screen there for us, which is awesome. Okay, so um, here now, as my last step, as many of you know, I have to get my first sentence ready, okay? So prepare your first sentence before the one minute preparation time is up. So you can start quickly and with good accuracy as soon as the examiner tells you to do so, okay? So as soon as the examiner says, all right, your one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking, you can, boom, off you go, all right? And please don't start by saying there are many objects that reflect traditions of, okay? So don't start with that, all right? The examiner is asking you to talk about one object that you think reflects your tradition. So don't say, well, there are many objects that reflect the traditions, including this, 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 and this, but the one I'd like to talk about today is, no. Why? Because you're wasting precious time, precious time to answer the cue card better and with more detail, okay? So this is just a reminder. I know some of you are probably getting sick of me reminding you of this because you're like, oh, you say that every time, but every time somebody's like, well, there are lots of objects, okay? So do not start with, there are lots of traditional, objects um, in Canada such as okay one other um, logic here by the way students like you saw that at the beginning when I was thinking about you know some different object of tradition I thought about the flag snowshoe uh, bottle of grady maple syrup the canoe uh, hockey stick um, so there are Canada's a young culture but we certainly have some objects that seem to kind of reflect our tradition traditions the other logical reason i don't want that is because it's a spoiler so the examiner for part three is going to ask me questions about traditional objects and i can definitely you know talk about the canoe talk about the snowshoe in part three so it's not like those other objects suddenly just disappear and they become useless they will be useful for part three can't remember what i said part three part two connected right so when the examiner in part three says are there any other objects yes absolutely um there are a few and then you know you don't have to go well i listed them for you at the beginning of part two um even though you didn't ask me um so just focus right so what you should say You should start specific. So you should say an object that I feel strongly reflects Canadian culture is a bottle of grade A maple syrup. Okay, so I'm starting very specific. Now, um, members, you can practice with me. So as you're obviously realizing, I'm going at a very nice steady pace today. I want to give many of you a chance to speak. And the reason for this is because this cue card is 
unique to each of us depending on you know what our traditions are and what our traditional objects are so i don't expect you to have common knowledge uh, on this topic as with some other cue cards you probably figured that out right yeah you're probably like oh yeah of course you know adrian's going to talk about an object that reflects canadian culture I'm going to talk about one that reflects uh, Indonesian culture or Italian culture or even Sicilian culture for you, Domenico, uh, or uh, Vietnamese culture, right? So, so it's up to you where you are, where you live, right? Uh, for me, it's Canadian culture, okay? So I'm going through this in a nice steady pace because I want to give as many of you uh, a chance as possible in the live speaking today on the websites to go through this. So uh, go through the same steps, follow the same structure, follow the same strategy, okay? But just with your object, all right? Okay. All right. So Angel says, the object I would like to tell you about is none other than a bottle of maple syrup. All right, Angel, that's good. Angel, talk about uh, an object that reflects your traditions, okay? Um, and Amra says, Angel, don't use the word I would like to tell you about. Yeah, exactly. So Amra, as you have heard from me and you will hear from um, expert public speakers, uh, don't just simply tell people what you will talk about. Instead, just talk about it, right? It's better. Mm -hmm. Anahita says, a commodity which uh, represents uh, Afghani customs is the Afghani Gand costume because it is an indicator of our people's self-esteem and innovative talents. Very nice, Anahita. That's a great start. Okay, uh, so this is what Anahita is starting with here. Let me just put that up. Okay, and it's good. All right, this is Anahita's start. Uh, Domenico, very nice. I like it. I'm looking forward to hearing your answers to this. So Domenico LaFauci says, a kind of object that reflects my traditions is none other than the Italian pasta maker, which has been a part of my family since my grandparents' time. Beautiful, Domenico. I love how uh, you use the term none other than the. Excellent. That's really great. Okay. Um, and then you're using some present perfect, which has been a part of my family since. And it's lovely, a lovely way. Okay. All right. Amra has this. I'm really hoping many of you will volunteer and speak today because I would love to hear about these objects. Amra says, an object that strongly reflects Azerbaijan culture is a kamancha, the Mugham musical instrument. Lovely. You know what, Amra, at some point today or tomorrow, I'm going to Google that and listen to it. It makes me curious. Lovely. Thank you for sharing. All right, Fuang, um, I would love to... Oh, there it is. Okay, Fuang, I see it. Okay. Yeah, we need to, uh, this is what we need to be doing in the world today, people, is focusing on the beautiful parts of our culture and how we can work together and share the best of us with each other. Uh, Fuang says, an object that reflects my country's traditions is the Ao Dai, which is the iconic dress of Vietnam. And I know what that is, Fuang. Yes, I've seen it. It is beautiful. Absolutely. Okay. Dylan says, look at all this lovely culture from around the world. Dylan says, an item that has a significant place in Turkish culture is an evil eye amulet. Yes, I know what that is. That amulet can be seen in many places around the world. I've seen the evil eye amulet. Yes. Very good, Dylan. That would be a good one. It's uh, it has a lot of uh, history and a lot of um, mythology and um, and interesting facts around it, for sure. All right. Chayani 
from Indonesia says, an item that describes uh, my country's tradition is the batik scarf, which has been the vital object of Javanese ancestry. A vital object, it's one vital object, okay? All right. Alexi has this to say. We are learning world culture. Uh, throughout history, Vishivanka has been a crucial part of Ukrainian traditions. And there we go. Yes, absolutely. All right. Amra says, yes, the sound is so beautiful and resonant. I will check it out. Okay. Gokhan says, nice, Amra. We have that instrument also in Turkey, which reflects the traditional musical style of the Black Sea region. Yes, very nice. Okay, so these all, to me, seem like some excellent choices, everybody. So now think about the remaining steps, right? Uh, definitely describing what they look like. So these objects, um, in my mind, uh, many of them have a very unique appearance. So the appearance here becomes exceptionally important to describe, right? And um, by the way, just a tip when you're thinking like, well, how can I do this? First, try on your own. Okay, this is a tip for everybody. Um, try first on your own to describe the appearance. Okay, so what it looks like. And here you definitely want to do that, right? Because your examiner might have no idea or very little idea of what this actually looks like. And so you really need to paint a picture, okay? Afterwards, afterwards, uh, look it up on Wikipedia. And see how they describe it. Okay, I have a very strong feeling that when you look these objects up on Wikipedia in English, in English, not, not in your own language, right? In English, I have a feeling that you are going to find a very nice description of that object, of what it looks like and its history. So this is a great one to check after and go, okay, how does Wikipedia talk about this object? That would give me a good idea of how to talk about this object for one to two minutes. Got it? So try that for homework, okay? Don't start looking at Wikipedia right now. Focus on the lesson. All right, so do that for homework. Um, okay. So uh, an object that I feel strongly reflects Canadian culture is a bottle of grade A maple syrup. This slow flowing golden color sugary syrup is usually contained in a in an ornate transparent glass bottle to show off its beauty. Okay. Um, in many cases, the bottle is shaped like the iconic maple leaf that is also found at the center of the Canadian flag. Okay. This is not only because maple syrup, as the name indicates, is derived uh, from tapping 
the maple tree, but it is also a representation of the different provinces, territories, and cultures that make up the mosaic of Canada. And thank you for giving me the opportunity, students, to share this culture with you here today. I'm feeling all emotional because it's very true, okay? So uh, Canada has a lot of maple trees, especially on the East Coast, but all throughout the country. And uh, the maple uh, leaf, uh, the points of the maple leaf, originally uh, present the 10 provinces and two territories, which are now three territories, but originally were two territories of the nation of Canada from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. So uh, joining the two oceans together, okay? So um, a um, fine bottle of maple syrup can be uh, purchased from just about any uh, grocery store or uh, gift shop. And it is a common household item uh, found in most Canadian homes. It is usually kept in the fridge for freshness or in a dark cupboard. I often buy maple syrup at Costco because they offer the best price around twenty dollars for a uh, 500 milliliter uh, bottle maybe it's one liter I don't know um, but uh, anyway it's not cheap it's not too expensive either but definitely not cheap okay uh, maple syrup represents the sweet and caring nature of Canadians as well as uh, the history of hard work it took to build the country. Indeed, Maple syrup takes a lot of effort to produce. It requires tapping uh, maple trees, collecting large amounts of sugary maple water, and then reducing this into a syrup. In the end, a delicious and unique uh, sweet flavor results and it is put on uh, pancakes. one of Canada's only uh, traditional foods, okay? Breakfast foods.
Now, I'm getting quite emotional and quite excited, and I've been talking definitely for about 90 seconds. So students, I have to remember, I'm in the IELTS, and as much as I like maple syrup, and as much as I'm proud to be Canadian, I have to remember that my goal here is to get a high band score. And I can do that by answering all the questions on the cue card, okay? So I must not forget about my notes and I must not forget about the questions on the card. So what is this object? Have I answered that? Okay. If yes, then I've answered it. When and where did you get it? Okay. Uh, I might want to add a little bit there. I talked about Costco. Uh, where do you keep this object? I've talked about that. What do you use this object for? I've talked about that and I've talked about what part of traditions it reflects. Okay. So by checking this card, what I would say next is, um, I bought the last bottle about two months ago, and I still have some, uh, because uh, it should only be used in small amounts as it is uh, very uh, sweet and concentrated. Without a doubt, any Canadian will agree that a bottle of maple syrup is reflective of local culture. Okay. All right. So there is my answer. I'm going to go through this and everybody, this is a speaking session. So speak, talk with me, repeat me. Okay. So the examiner says, uh, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. And so I begin. An object that I feel strongly reflects Canadian culture is a bottle of grade A maple syrup. This slow flowing golden colored sugary syrup is usually contained in an ornate transparent glass bottle to show off its beauty. In many cases, the bottle is shaped like the iconic maple leaf that is also found at the center of the Canadian flag. This is not only because maple syrup, as the name indicates, is derived from tapping the maple tree, but it is also representation of the different provinces, territories, and cultures that make up the mosaic of Canada. A fine bottle of maple syrup can be purchased from just about any grocery store or gift shop, and it is a common household item found in most Canadian homes. It is usually kept in the fridge for freshness or in a dark cupboard. I often buy maple syrup at Costco because they offer the best price, around $20 for a 500 milli bottle. Maple syrup represents the sweet and caring nature of Canadians as well as the history of hard work it took to build the country. Indeed, maple syrup takes a lot of effort to produce. It requires tapping maple trees, collecting large amounts of sugary maple water and then reducing this into a syrup. In the end, a delicious and unique sweet flavor results and it is put on pancakes, one of Canada's only traditional breakfast foods. I bought the last bottle about two months ago and I still have some because it should only be used in small amounts as it is very sweet and concent concentrated. Without a doubt, any Canadian will agree that a bottle of maple syrup is reflective of local culture. <laughs> Don't get too emotional. Be ready for part three. You have to be a little bit devoid of emotions. All right. Everybody, that's my response. And notice that I have this kind of concluding sentence that should signal to the examiner that I'm done. I'm finished. Okay. And I appreciate everybody for uh, letting me share a part of Canadian culture with you. Thank you. Now, I hope everybody is feeling up to the task. 
and we will go to the website and you will have a chance to share your object that reflects your traditions and culture. Okay. Yeah, Gokan, you can use in the end or at the end. Both is both are okay. All right. Elizabeth, I'm glad that you uh, enjoyed it. Um, I see that uh, many of you are writing, which is great. I'm seeing some new people writing as well. Baga, Sajie, nice. Okay. Ahmad, nice. Great. Great to see many of you sharing. Okay. So Ahmad, uh, let me just grab a couple of these students before we get into our uh, volunteering session. Okay. So Ahmad says, an object that reflects my village in southeast Sulawesi, which is an origin of the place of the kite, a kite made with an exotic leaf called the kolope. Ahmad, I would love to see that. I'm going to check that out as well. Okay, Bagus has this to say. Baga says, an object that I feel strongly reflects Indonesian culture is the Tabruk coffee. This is one of the traditional ways of brewing coffee whereby the barista pours the water directly after putting it onto the ground coffee beans. Okay, Baga's good. I made some corrections there. Romelia. One traditional object in Romania is the ai, a handmade blouse worn by both men and women. The ai is a symbol of Romanian folklore and has been a part of the cultural heritage for centuries. All right. That looks fantastic. Okay, everybody, let's do a bit of volunteering. So this is how you volunteer for speaking, and I'm hoping... Uh, Alexi can put the uh, instructions into the chat for everybody. Nelly, welcome to our group of members. It's awesome to have you. Alexi has put the instructions in there. That's fantastic. Elizabeth says, sounds good that coffee. Yes, I'm sure it's way better than my instant coffee that I'm drinking here. Okay, so uh, how do you do this everyone? Well. You go to our website, aehelp.com. Once you are at the website, aehelp.com, uh, then you log in. Okay, you can create a free account uh, by clicking the uh, green button that's just above my head there, or you can uh, join the premium version by clicking the uh, big red button that's there. Okay, and then once you have stepped into your My Student account, uh, you can uh, click on this big blue button there called Student Partner Speaking. It's just one of the many awesome perks of the website uh, along with the online course and so forth. And then you accept the terms, you get into the chat, and there are lots of people in here today called Winder, Abdul, Kriti, Thu, Ridham, Krishna, Chayani, Domenico, Amra, and many more. That's awesome. Um, so once you're in here, find me. You will see me in here as master. Uh, easy to identify all big letters and then uh, beside my name you will see an envelope and uh, you can click that and then write I would like to speak or please let me try okay now I'm looking for members premium members right off the bat um, just because uh, this is a members chat class but remember everybody part three is coming up soon and then everybody will be able to uh, join in so Let's do this. Lots of volunteers, lots of people wanting to share their objects of cultural tradition. Amra, I think many of us are dying to find out more about this instrument. So let's start with you today. Are you ready? Okay. 
Nelly, if you're there, volunteer. I would love to hear your voice through the speaking chat. Uh, follow the instructions, Nelly, um, that uh, Alexi put in there. Okay. Hello, sir. Hi, Amra. How are you? I'm doing well, sir. What about you? I am doing quite well also. Thank you for asking. Amra, I'm excited to hear about your object of tradition. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to talk about it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I will start you off. And uh, whenever you're ready, just give me one moment. Uh, here we go. So um, that is the end of part one. And now uh, we will continue with part two. I will show you a card with some questions. You will have one minute to prepare and one to two minutes to speak. Talk about an object that reflects your traditions. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Um, an object that strongly reflects Azerbaijan traditions is a kemancha a Muram musical instrument. Uh, it is a traditional bowed string wooden instrument about 40 centimeters in length and has uh, a round sound hole with four strings made of silk, which is commonly used in Azerbaijan music. Uh, I got it from my grandfather, who was an avid music lover and played the Kamancha himself at, on the weddings. He passed it down to me as um, a family heirloom, and I keep this object in my bedroom, displayed on a shelf, because it represents my family's cultural heritage, and it's a reminder of my grandfather and the uh, um, memories uh, I have of him playing the Kamancha. Even though I'm not uh, a skilled musician, uh, I enjoy practicing and um, playing simple tunes on the Kamancha occasionally to keep uh, the tradition alive and appreciate the um, beautiful and resonant sounds that it produces. Uh, and furthermore, I feel connected to my uh, cultural roots while I am playing Kamancha. And uh, in my culture, music is an important aspect of our traditions and uh, Kamancha is a symbol of that. And it is often used in celebrations and gatherings, uh, such as weddings and festivals. And playing Kamancha requires a lot of skill and practice. And it's a way for me and Azerbaijanis to connect uh, with um, our heritage and express ourselves um, through music. Okay, I will stop you there. Your time is up and we will now uh, continue to part three. For this part, I will ask you a question related to your response and some quick uh, questions connected to the topic of part two. Do you know how to play this musical instrument? Uh, I'm, uh, while, uh, while I was a child, my grandfather uh, he taught me uh, how, uh, give, gave me how, instructions how to play. But uh, as uh, uh, 10 years passed, I forget about uh, it, but I'm uh, watching it on YouTube and I'm playing, um, pr I'm practicing uh, simple tunes. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Okay, I'm just making a couple of corrections. All right, Amra. Uh, first of all, that part two was outstanding. Uh, it sounded like you were reading uh, Wikipedia <laughs> with your own experience <laughs> about Azerbaijan on the Kamenja. Am I pronouncing it right? Kamenja? Yes, Kamanja. Kamanja. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing the spelling is Kamanja like that. Okay. Um, all right. So it's a string instrument. Great. Um, 
and uh, it, it's a bow string instrument, and the uh, bow is silk. Interesting. It's not horsehair yeah. or some other. Okay. Um, and it's commonly used. Uh, very nice. Um, you said, I got it from my grandfather. He passed it down to me as a family heirloom. Um, yeah, very good word. Heirloom means that uh, you are the heir to that object. Okay. Um, yeah. When we are the heir to an object, um, then and we get it, then what's the word? What's the verb that we use in that case? Like if I get a ring from my grandfather, then what's the verb? I something that ring. Um, I starts with an I N in inherited. Yeah, that's right. So um, you inherited this instrument. Um, now pass it down is the actual idiomatic expression or phrasal verb, which means to uh, inherit. Okay. All right. So you use that instead, which is absolutely okay. All right. Uh, just giving you a bit more instruction here. Now, Amra, uh, band score wise, yeah, that would be easily a band eight to nine, um, depending on the examiner. But uh, I would be scoring you up in the 8.5 to nine for sure, okay, uh, mm -hmm. for the part two response. The part two response was very well uh, detailed. You had uh, really clear information, uh, a lot of good use of adverbs and adjectives, adverbial clauses to. Uh, define and reflect this. I can almost hear the music of the instrument um, when you <laughs> when you set it. So that's great. D uh, may I, may I ask? Do you actually have this object? Like, is this an object you truly possess? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, my grandfather, unfortunately, he passed. Uh, uh, he passed. Uh, uh, um, he passed away uh, uh, about uh, ten years ago, and uh, since then, I keep this object in a safe place. And whenever I enter the room, I uh, keep an eye of, uh, on this object and make sure that uh, everything is okay with this object. Right. So, so it's so okay. So, yeah, I could feel that this was this was something that uh, you're speaking from the heart and from from the truth of this object. So, great. Yeah. So, this object, if this question were to come up on your IELTS exam, this would be a very good one for you. Um, okay, um, so uh, playing the object. Um, so that was a little bit more awkward. That response was a little bit lower. It was a little bit more confusing. It was unclear. Uh, be ready, everybody, for that follow-up question. Okay, the examiner is thinking about you know how to follow it up, especially if you do a really good job in part two. The IELTS examiner will certainly ask you some interesting question related to your response. Okay, so. Uh, just repeat this after me, Amra. While I was a child, my grandfather taught me to play, but as the years passed, I have forgot much. Nevertheless, I've been self-teaching through YouTube, and I'm enjoying this hobby. Uh, uh, while uh, while I was a ch child, uh, my grandfather taught me, but as the years passed, I forgot uh, how to uh, play it. Uh, but I this day nevertheless I uh, I do self uh, teaching on YouTube and I'm um, let's practice a bit of present perfect here. So nevertheless, I have been self teaching through YouTube and I have been enjoying this hobby very much. Uh, nevertheless, I have I have been uh, teaching uh, through YouTube uh, and I am practicing. Uh, and I'm practicing uh, and I'm practicing it to play one more time Amra nevertheless I have been self teaching through YouTube and I have been enjoying this hobby very much uh, nevertheless I have been uh, t self teaching uh, through YouTube and I have uh, and I have been and I have been loving this um, <laughs> I'm hobby sorry, very I much this hobby very much okay good yeah so that present perfect all right Amra good practice for those follow-up questions so when you're doing that part two try to think about you know what kind of follow-up questions might come afterwards and then really practice that if you're practicing 
uh, with some of the other students as you do with uh, on a heater with somebody else through the website then make sure to practice these follow-up questions with each other okay okay sir. all right good job Amra and I would uh, love to hear you play that instrument for us one of these days okay yeah all right, all right. So <laughs> bye Amra Goodbye. I almost asked Amra to play it for us if he had it there beside him but uh, anyway okay um, let's take another uh, one of our uh, members here. Um, let's hear about uh, the the scarf, uh, Chayani. Are you ready? Okay, we've got uh, definitely time to listen to a few of these traditional objects. So uh, and learn, learn a bit about global culture. What a lovely class, right? We're learning English, we're learning for IELTS, and we're learning international culture. That's awesome, Amra. Thumbs up, absolutely. Okay. Adrian. Hi, Chayani. How are you? I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm doing quite well. Thank you for asking. All right, Chayani, I'm looking forward to learning a bit about Indonesian culture and about, I'm guessing you're going to talk about this scarf, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I will start you off. Uh, here we go. So, uh, talk about an object that reflects your traditions. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. An item that describes my country's tradition is Bati Scarf, which has been a vital object of Indonesian and Japanese ancestry. This seal scarf usually presents the ornament of flowers and doodles with around 120 centimeter length that made the appearances look unique. In fact, the pattern not only appears in scarf, but also emerged in Indonesian school students and employees' uniform. Uh, originally, my, my body scarf is from my late grandmother uh, after I was born in 2003, and it is uh, also a piece of cake that batik scarf can be bought from traditional market and batik retail shop. I have been experienced uh, bought a piece of the batik um, scarf in the Indonesian traditional scarves and I bear gained around 150,000 rupiah to 250,000 rupiah. Indeed, some of the fabric are vulnerable of damage. Therefore, uh, I prefer to keep in a box that inside of my wardrobe. It will be the best place to keep in and there is no a big deal because this is an important object that can present my identity and characteristic as an Indonesian. Furthermore, I use batik scarf when there is an, uh, a wedding ceremony of my Japanese family and also for other certain events like graduation and while I'm performing traditional dance. Without looking further, any Indonesian folks uh, that batik scarf is reflective to local um, culture because batik is the one of the biggest masterpiece that Indonesian people right now should preserve it um, um, be, uh, to avoid the uh, extinction of the batik. So uh, that is like an important object of the for the rest for Indonesian people that is scarf batik and many people have uh, has proud about the this big masterpiece. Okay, I'll stop you there, and we will now continue uh, to uh, part three. Uh, for this part, I will ask you a question related to your response, and some questions uh, connected to this topic. Um, how long ago um, was the first appearance of this scarf? So I mean like how long has this uh, object been a part of the Javanese culture? How, for how, how many years or centuries? I think it's been um, around five centuries ago that since, uh, since the Japanese, uh, Japanese Empire used this uh, traditional scarf that is batik because it can represent the identity as an Indonesian people and also this is like a biggest ma a masterpiece in that era. 
And what do the motifs on the scarf represent about the Javanese culture? Mostly the ornament, it represents the flower because it's so outstanding, a person, um, mostly for the, uh, for the Indonesian woman, it makes, um, makes them really confident. So that's why many of the, uh, uh, the batik maker make the ornament of the flowers. Got it. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chayani, for sharing that. That was really good. So that would be like a strong 7.5 for sure. It was very clear um, and um, you gave a lot of detail. I think you did a really good job focusing on the questions. So for instance, you paid attention to this, like where do you keep this object and why? And I think Amra did a really good job of that as well, by the way, also, which is very, very smart. So students that have been in these classes uh, for longer uh, know that it's really important to answer answer all parts of the card. Um, so Chani, very good. What I'd like you to focus on is really kind of changing up the rhythm of what of how you're speaking. Sometimes I find your speech a little bit um, like um, redundant in the intonation so it's like which makes it a little bit challenging to follow even though it's good english so try to change it up a bit like sometimes slow down a bit sometimes speed up a bit sometimes emphasize a word do you feel what i'm telling you here to kind of keep the attention keep the focus of the listener a bit better Yes, uh, I got what you mean. It's like it's almost like your speech is too rhythmic, like it's too set, and then it kind of it's hard to keep up with it near the end of it. Even though the sentences are quite good, right? So, so really practice. Um, you know, say the same answer again, but maybe slow it down, stretch your words a little bit in some places, and I think that will that will help. Sometimes it feels like you're really kind of almost rushing to get the information out, right? Yeah. So, so don't rush to get the information out. Okay, uh, repeat the sentence after me. Um, the beautiful flower motifs on the scarf represent the strength and beauty of the Javanese women. The beautiful motif of the uh, flower, the beautiful flower motif on the scarf, is strengthen the. Um, can you repeat again? Yeah, the flower motifs on the batik scarf represent the beauty and the strength of the Javanese women. The flowers motif on the batik scarf it represent the strength and the beauty of the Javanese women. Or women. or men, or men too if the men wear it as well. Uh, yes. Do men wear it also? Yeah, men uh, do wear batik scarf. Okay. Uh, beauty, strength, and maybe even the resilience. I know that flowers often represents resilience as well. Do you know this word, resilience? No, it, uh, I already know this word from you. Okay, the resilience of the Javanese men and women. Okay, great. Um, I will definitely have to check out this scarf. It might be a gift that I will consider for my wife at some point. It sounds like it's something she would love to have. So, um, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Chani, for sharing that uh, with us. And I hope you have an awesome rest of your weekend. Yes. Thank you, Adrian. See you next week. Bye, Chani. All right, that was Chayani, that was really good. Um, okay, Anahita, I'm just moving along here. We've got time, I wanna hear more. Uh, Anahita, are you ready? Okay, and practice everybody. So practice words, write down new words. If resilience is a new word for you, write it down. Thanks for the thumbs up everybody, that's awesome. Hi, Anahita. Hi, sir. How are you doing? Hi, sir. I cannot hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> can you hear me now? Check your mic. Uh, check your headset. Check your headset. Hi, sir. I can hear you just fine. I think maybe if you're using a wireless headset, it could be the batteries. How are you 
I'm good, thanks. How about you, Tara? I'm doing good. Can you hear me now? Check your mic. Check your headset. Oh. Hi, sir. I can hear you. Okay, make sure you're Stop. hearing me sure you're through hearing the... Me. Uh... Yeah, no, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You're, I, yeah, you were listening I'm through YouTube, right? The... Yeah. <laughs> good, good. All right, Anahita, let's do this. I'm going to start you off. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, talk about an object that reflects your traditions. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Uh, a commodity that uh, represents uh, the Afghan people's uh, customers, the Afghani gun costume. Uh, it is a ravishing long dress composed of uh, leather, glass, or uh, bead embroidery, and uh, it is uh, uh, a 90 centimeter long for uh, middle height people. And uh, its uh, history goes back to uh, many centuries ago. And uh, despite uh, uh, Afghanistan being one of uh, the center of Silk Road in 20th century. It also uh, represents uh, that uh, my people uh, have been on a roll by preserving uh, its industry, and uh, uh, I uh, and it is uh, we wear this uh, clothing uh, the night before wedding uh, and the uh, wedding days and uh, and the um, independence days and uh, we can get it uh, uh, either online either. Uh, and person in different shops and uh, uh, it is used for fashion and uh, dentity, daintiness uh, because uh, Afghans uh, always looks uh, wants to look uh, attractive and uh, uh, it reflects uh, the part of our culture that uh, our people are uh, uh, working hard and despite uh, women uh, uh, hadn't the opportunity to uh, study uh, uh, they uh, could uh, continue uh, their life by uh, uh, by choosing this uh, its industry and uh, uh, and uh, making uh, the uh, lives of people uh, more uh, more easy not easy but uh, um, good better and uh, uh yeah that's it okay thank you so much for sharing anahita that was awesome i i got a pretty good idea of um what you're talking about yeah it is it's a it's a beautiful embroidered um robe or dress we can say and it's in front of me i can see it it's uh, quite detailed and ornate um i have seen it before uh so uh, a commodity that represents nice use of the word commodity by the way that's some good vocabulary um anahita i can feel that your uh english is starting to become more fluent so certain words certain phrases are starting to come to you a bit easier you're still fighting and struggling a bit to get some ideas out but it's getting better okay so that's good your practice is paying off all right um, what I would like you to focus on is the application of connective words so when you're practicing at home and you're not trying to really rush or to be too fluent just um, speak a bit slower so go slowly and really put those connective words in there so um, this Afghani robe is made of silk because traditionally Afghanistan has been the center of the silk road so much of this fabric has come through Afghanistan when being traded no, from I east to the west that, yeah. okay um, Okay. I'm, I'm just saying as an example, so it doesn't have to be specific here, but just as an example of how, right? So because, as a result, when, if, so using those conditions, those cause and effects to kind of smooth out your language. So um, right now, it felt like your uh, ideas were put together from a lot of little pieces. And what you want to work towards is that your idea is more of a, smoother more combined piece are you kind of following what i'm saying yes sir okay um, okay 
and that will help with your grammatical range and complexity as well okay um, repeat this uh, after me okay um, it represents that even though women do not have opportunities to study they can be prosperous through other creative ways uh, can you say it again sir yes it represents that despite afghani women do not have opportunities to study they can be prosperous through other creative ways uh, it represents that uh, this uh, fight uh, afghani women doesn't have uh, the opportunity to study uh, they can prosperous uh, um, they can be prosperous through other creative ways. They can prosperous through uh, creative other ways. They other can, creative ways. One, one more time. They can be prosperous through other creative ways. They can prosperous uh, through other creative ways. Good. And it's be prosperous. You need the be verb there. They can be prosperous. They can be prosperous uh, by other creative ways. Yes, or if we want to change the word form, we can say they can prosper. They can prosper by other creative ways. Very good, Anahita. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, can I ask about my band score? Yes, so your band score there would be about a band six. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank All right. You, thank you. Bye, Anahita. Bye, sir. All right, that was Anahita. Uh, Dylan, I think, has a share. Dylan, are you ready? Oh, I wish I could get everybody in there today. I'm still looking at Domenico with the pasta maker and Wong with the traditional dress. So, but uh, let's give Dylan a chance. I don't think we've heard from Dylan in a while. So, hopefully, Dylan has a chance. Hi, Dylan. Hi, how are you? I'm okay, sir. How about you? I am doing quite well. Thank you for asking. Dylan, have you ever had maple syrup? No, I haven't because it's quite expensive here. <laughs> right. Yeah, it is. It's pretty expensive. It's even exp yeah, it's expensive in Canada as well. Um, all right. Well, hopefully I will be able to get all of you up some maple syrup one of these days um okay when i go on a big world tour and visit everybody um dylan uh are you ready to answer this uh cue card yes i am all right let's do it so talk about an object that reflects your traditions your one minute preparation time is up please begin speaking an item that has a cultural significance in turkey is an evil eye um amulet which was bestowed upon me by my late grandmother eight years ago it's a round shaped uh, glass made object that is in the size of an apple it has uh, three layers made of navy blue white and uh, light blue in the center of this item there is a black dot that gives it an eye-like appearance evil eye is a phenomenon where an individual experiences an unfortunate event because of the ill wish of others and it's believed that this talisman has a protective power uh, from the harmful effect of others uh, malevolent look um, like a shield and has been decorating houses of people that has been living in anatolian region since the ancient times um, and i I would say that I'm no exception. I have been keeping this talisman hanged on the door so that no ill wish may affect me. Mm, that evil eye amulet is a very special item for me because it does not only represent the cultural heritage of Anatolians, but it also helps me to commemorate the times that I had with my late grandmother, whom I miss greatly. And if I'm going to be lucky enough to have a daughter in the future, I'm going to leave it to her as a family heirloom. 
Okay, your time is up. I will stop you there. And now we will continue with part three. Uh, for this part, I will ask you a question related to your response and some questions connected to this topic. Um, what kind of material is this um, evil eye made of? Well, it's usually made from glass, but I heard that it could be made from steel or wood as well. All right, that was really good. Um, I would give you an easy 8.5 for that. Just a couple of small mistakes that keep you from getting that band nine. Um, you know, in my heart, I want to give you a band nine, but according to the IELTS, I'm not allowed to uh, for a couple of mistakes that I'll show you in a second. Uh, but um, that doesn't matter. So, you know, even if um, somebody doesn't get a band, I mean, an 8.5 is incredible. Just keep in mind that most native speakers would have a difficulty scoring that high. Um, the actual content of what you have said, uh, Dylan, is outstanding. So if you were to give a presentation in front of an audience about the evil eye and this heirloom that you possess, uh, I would give you a standing ovation. So I think that you did a, a, a really, a truly remarkable job of uh, explaining this and you used a lot of great vocabulary. Uh, you said an item that has a cultural significance, nice collocation with the cultural significance in Turkey, is an evil eye amulet. Amulet, I don't know why it's not, it should be amulet. Um, that was bestowed upon me. Bestowed upon me uh, is a very nice uh, expression. Bestowed upon me means that it was given to me, but uh, when we say bestowed upon me, it's not just given to me, it means like um, entrusted to me. So given to me with a lot of love and care. So it has more meaning. By my grandmother, um, it has an eye-like appearance, right? Okay, and then you use this word, talisman. Did you learn that word today or have you known that word before, Dylan? Well, to be honest, I looked at these questions a few hours before the class and it was it's quite hard for me to pronounce um, amulet. So I checked uh, other words that I can Very uh, good. Say it's very mean, smart. Um, yeah, so Dylan, that's very smart. Everybody take a page from uh, Dylan's uh, strategy here for these classes. So what Dylan's saying is she looks at the questions before the class, studies for them, thinks about words that are connected, and then uses them. That is really, really, really smart, okay? Um, a talisman, yeah, that's an English word. And yeah, English speakers will know that word. A talisman is a special type of amulet, okay? An amulet is like a pendant. So uh, you can think about this as pendant. Uh, amulet, um, talisman, okay? Uh, these are all basically a type of metal that is worn um, and may or may not have uh, mythical powers, okay? Like, for example, protecting you from uh, evil. So um, repeat after me. It has the ability to ward off Malevolent intent. It has the ability of ward off the malevolent intent. Ability to mm -hmm. ward off malevolent intent. Ability to ward off malevolent malevolent intent. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> that uh, movie with uh, who is it? Um, it's that famous. I think it's Angelina Jolie. Uh, Maleficent, right? The movie. And uh, that's the malevolent. Yeah. Uh, benevolent means good intent. Benevolent. Malevolent means negative intent. Okay. So the opposite is benevolent. Benevolent, good intent. Just repeat after me. Benevolent. Benevolent. <laughs> Benevolent. <laughs> benevolent, yes. And the opposite is malevolent. <laughs> I believe like that, okay? Which is uh, malevolent like that. It's negative intent, okay? Yeah, it's good to practice these words. These are those higher level vocabulary for sure. Okay, um, and then you said, I have been keeping this talisman hanged on the door. Um, 
the better way to say that or the better word uh, verb there is hung hung on the door okay I have been keeping this talisman hung on the door uh, so that no ill wish can affect me and I like how you used ill wish that was also very good so you used a lot of very fine vocabulary let's say and you even created a simile you said like a shield okay um, absolutely okay so that was really good so Dylan thank you for sharing um, it sounds like a fantastic object um, and um, I'm glad that you have this uh, keepsake to remind you of your of your grandma that's that's always a great uh, part to, to have something like that so um, thank you for sharing thank you sir okay bye Dylan have a nice day goodbye all right thumbs up to Dylan that was really great Students, I have a feeling if I just keep going, we're not going to stop until the next class. So I have to stop. But Domenico, Fuang, Alif, Harshit, Pathan, come back in 30 minutes and do some volunteering for part three. And then hopefully you can connect your part two ideas and give us a little insight into what those uh, part uh, two objects of tradition would have been for us to hear about. Okay, so um, don't give up, come back. Come back. I want to hear about that pasta maker in part three, Domenico Fong. I want to hear about that dress. Uh, students, this is ahelp.com. If you want to book an IELTS speaking interview, a full one with me, <clears throat> click on that uh, yellow button that's way up there. Um, and uh, to get all the materials, all the videos, uh, go to um, the website, uh, ahelp.com, and uh, just click on the, on the big uh, red button right there join the premium odds package it's a one-time payment for lifetime access it was lovely to hear so many of you share your stories of heirlooms and objects of tradition uh, it was a lovely class really was uh, thank you so much i hope that you come back for part three everybody uh in part three um it will be an all chat class so everybody will be able to join the chat okay during the 30 minute break, again, I highly recommend going to ahelp.com, glshelp.com, peruse, create an account so you can volunteer because you need an account, even if it's not a full version account, you need an account to volunteer. Uh, thank you so much everybody for sharing, Fuang, Domenico, Chani, Elizabeth, thank you all for your contributions. See you in 30 minutes. Much love to all of you, wherever you are. Bye for now. See you soon.